In this video, I was going to talk about this car because I've made some very big changes that I've never mentioned before. And I've also nearly finished plumbing it in, but I just broke something. Only my map sensor, but it's just pissed me off. So not today. I show this when I've actually finished it. Give me a week. Instead, I'm going to do a bit of turbo tech because well, this turbo being here reminded me, and also, wow, it's something I wanted to talk about for a while because there's a lot of misunderstanding. And, well, yeah, turbo sizing is very misunderstood at the best of times. But this side, as in the compressor, not quite so much. Turbine side, though, very misunderstood. And especially, I've seen it a lot, it, it kind of comes from these things, which is a HE351 8 centimeter that Compressor Racing are selling. They've got available at the moment. Billet fanciness. It's because of the 8 centimeter housing, people are like, oh, that's really small. It's like, well, no, because you obviously don't understand in comparison to what exactly. Because yeah, it's small compared to like a 12, a bigger housing. But it's not actually small because there's more to it than the housing the wheel makes more of a difference than the housing so let me talk about it a little bit this is technically according to whole set at least i don't think you can even read that by he351 it's not like a typical he351 there's he351 cws which is one that was only on a certain kind of dodge ram back in the day it's like a HY35 rear end and a HX40 compressor side. Ignore them because they're good turbos, but they're nothing like any other HE351. Most HE351s these days are like HX35, HX40 hybrids. They are HX35 size turbine side, HX40 size compressor. This one though, which is why you can't just go by the name on a whole set, which I've said before, you know, you need to know the spec, otherwise you could be buying anything. These are a bit different. It's a HX35 size turbine side, although an 11 blade wheel, so higher flowing than even the normal. But pretty much a HX35 size compressor too, albeit a billet one, albeit not even the normal billet HX35 wheels. These are thinner and they're slightly larger too, so it's like 55 rather than 54. It's like 55.85 if I recall. And you, normally they're like 54.76 and I think maybe 82 as well, but either way. This is like, um, it's like a super duper HX35, but from the factory. These are mega turbos for like, you know, what are they charge them, 500 quid for them? But people misunderstand like turbine sizing of them. They have them available, the 12 centimeter housing too, which is, the most common one for this size turbo. But people's like, oh, why have you put an eight centimeter on a VR6? Isn't that way too small? Well, this is what I mean about the sizing. Basically, it's a bloody big turbine wheel, regardless. People commonly fit GTX um, 3076s on 2.8 VR6s. And they make like 500 horsepower in front of things. This is much bigger. This, I mean, a GTX 30 turbine wheel is 6055. This is 6070, well, 7060. So, um, yeah, it's a bigger turbine wheel, a higher flowing turbine wheel. So, if a GTX 30 is good for 500 horsepower or more on a 2.8 VR this is too basically this is not a restriction at all and it's the same with the turbine housing this is a well it's an eight centimeter which works out to be about AR 60 ish so it's not tiny as soon as most people run like 63 housings on the GTX 30s and 35s this is almost GTX 35 size turbine wheel. Basically they are, if I recall, 68, 62. So this is two mil bigger on the turbine inducer and two mil smaller on the turbine exducer. 
So it's basically a GTX 35 turbine wheel. So no, eight centimeter housing isn't a restriction because the wheel is big. Basically the wheel is really what dictates flow. The housing is kind of like to, how do I explain it? Imagine when you're specking the turbo, the turbine wheel is what the flow is mainly and you would spec the housing to fine tune it. Do you know what I mean? So you'll get a turbine wheel in the correct ballpark for what you're going for. And on a VR, it would be like a 35 size turbine if you're going for, you know, 500 horsepower or less. Well, 550 or less probably. I don't know if anyone pushes these to 600 with a 35 on them. I've never looked. But anyway, in my opinion, about a 35 size turbine and then you increase or decrease the actual housing to fine tune it if this was running you know if i had internals in this or i was planning to run you know big boost basically then yeah i would run a bigger housing you know a 12 maybe on a fairly mild setup running maybe a bar or so a 16 if i was trying to push it but this isn't that this is going for, I don't know, 400, 450. And at that level, the eight centimeter is not gonna hold it back, but it's gonna give it more OEM type spool, you know, super fast. They These will spool fast, even with a 16 on them on a some of the size of a VR, but still, there's no point overdoing it for nothing. The, the basics of it would be, the bigger the engine, the bigger the turbine side the higher the boost the bigger the turbine side so although this is a relatively large capacity engine but fairly common to have a gtx 35 size turbine on it which is this this is going to be running like half a bar of boost also this is like basically a stock internals car with a little bit of boost tickled into it it's going to feel like oem just with another you know 120 horsepower more and yeah, realistically, people have been pushing something that flows about the same as an 8 centimeter with that uh, turbine wheel, as in a GTX 30, to 500 odd anyway. So this is still going to have pretty easy life. There's going to be no top end restriction, what we're doing. And obviously, the smaller the capacity of the engine, the more you can get away with it with any given size housing anyway. So something like a a 180t the eight centimeter would go huh, it, well it might it probably would go to the limit of the compressor which is about 600 pushed hard because you look at well a good example actually is you look at the dsm guys in america which is a mitsubishi oh what are they called eclipses and eagle talons they've got the 4g 63 evo engine as we would call it but theirs come out in those cars are standard and they always ran whole sets. Like, it was just really popular. HY 35s and HX 35s especially, but they ran up to like HX 52s on these 900 plus horsepower 4Gs, all sorts of stuff. But anyway, the HX 35s, they used to run them up to like 600 horsepower proven, even with these tiny um, like aftermarket bolt-on housings that allowed it to fit to the standard exhaust manifolds on them because they're a funny like square flange they called them um, i think they were made by bullseye they were called bep flanges and they were fucking tiny turbine housings like i can't remember like 55 ar or something i can't remember but they was you know they would push them to 600 so relatively big i say big but it's not eight centimeter housing not an issue they used to push the hy 35s which is basically the same compressor but a smaller turbine wheel. I think they are 6258 turbine wheel. So, you know, small, way smaller than this. And they used to push them to 600 too. And, with, and that'd be with a nine centimeter housing. So an eight centimeter, one of these, not an issue. Another little thing that I see a lot, and I'm surprised because it's so common. I see people going, oh, but I've got a single scroll manifold, so I can't run a twin scroll turbo. It's like, well, of course you can, it makes no difference. If you wanted to, you could um, like smooth out the divider in the start of the twin scroll housing, but 
the amount of twin scroll turbos on single scroll manifolds probably outnumbers the amount of cars running full twin scroll setups. You don't get the advantage of the spool of twin scroll, but there's no disadvantage. It would work just the same as a, a, a single scroll manifold and a single scroll turbo. So, you know, don't have to be afraid. I mean, the amount of um, people I know over the years who's run HX35s, 40s, 351s, all twin scroll, and almost all of them ran them on single scroll manifolds because even though I used to tell everybody how much better twin scroll is, people don't listen, but they still had the results because, you know, there's no harm in it. It's normal. In the diesel world, it's, it's not even thought of like, or, or even in the big V8 world, like American stuff, you might have big power turbo V8s and they've nearly always got divided housings. And is the turbo set up, you know, the manifolds divided? Hell no. But it doesn't even, you know, means nothing cause it, to them because then they know it doesn't matter. Another factor of smaller turbine housings, you can see a lot on OEM cars, but you do see it on modified cars too, like dyno results. Say like a factory, factory turbo car, at factory levels of boost, you'll see peak power is maybe, I don't know, say 6,500 RPM. Let's just bring out an arbitrary number, 6,500 RPM. That same car, no changes, just more boost, say, you know, whatever amount more boost, it will add, say, another 30 horsepower. But if you look where peak power RPM is, it's often dropped by like 1,000 RPM. And that's because they've got a tiny turbine housing and the more boost, the lower the peak power tends to be because the turbine housing's, you know, choking it a little bit. So while a small turbine housing might make peak power surprisingly low, and it's a good it's a good sign actually sometimes that your turbine side's restricting it. If you see peak power surprisingly low, if you're on relatively low boost, chances are it will peak basically as high as it would NA, if not higher. And that's the thing, when you've got a nice, healthy turbo, like with no, with no back pressure or very little, especially like one to one or less, you end up with a really high peak power level, you know, maybe way higher than standard. Like my 180, for example. I mean, the factory, even with the NA cams that I've got in it, factory peak power is, I don't know, barely over six. This one, because I've got a nice big turbo with very low back pressure, my peak power is over 7,500 RPM with those same little cams. So it says a lot. Same as on my old RB20. Because I had a what's effectively a HY35 9 centimetre. It was a compressor racing RS341, which I don't make no more. But imagine it was very, very close to this. Similar compressor, 9 centimetre housing, not 8 centimetre. It was single scroll. You know, it pulled hard, you know, I think it made peak power nearly seven and it pulled hard without any let off till eight on stock head, stock cams, RB20. You would never have that from a normal RB20 because it's choked up. So yeah, that's a good indication if you look at dyno results. If suddenly you're up the boost and your peak power maximum RPM has gone down a lot, you know you're probably running out of turbine. But on this, because we're only running half a bar of boost, say, it's, that turbine is not a problem. You're guaranteed peak power is the same as a standard one of VR6s, if not more so. So anyway, hope you like that little short tech video. And when I get back to this, the MR2 early next week, this is Sunday now, and I am just quitting for today because it's pissed me off because I broke something. <laughs> Hopefully you'll see more because I've made some rather uh, interesting changes that I've never mentioned, so I better show you. See you next time.